the Balfour Declaration. Working together as part of renewed Middle East. Let us hope that this debate contributes to securing that end. Ross Thompson. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I draw members' attention to my register of interests for a trip to Israel in the West Bank last year. The Balfour Declaration of 1917 is one of the most significant and most important letters in history. Incorporated into the mandate for Palestine in 1922, the historical connection between the Jewish people and Palestine was recognised and it has demonstrated the UK's crucial and integral role in creating a homeland for the Jewish people. The UK has held an unwavering commitment to its two-state solution. And as we proudly mark the centenary year of the Balfour Declaration, we are presented with a unique opportunity to renew the Middle East peace process. We know that the way to achieve a genuine peace is for the two sides in this conflict to sit down together in direct peace talks, to work together towards a resolution and a lasting peace. The Israeli-Palestinian conflict is complex. There is only so much you can learn from textbooks in the media. And visiting the region last year and being able to speak with people on the ground on both sides of the conflict provided me with the greatest insight possible into the issues. Israel is an open and liberally democratic country which values freedom of speech, allowing people from all backgrounds and beliefs to express themselves. It is a country which celebrates diversity. You will find churches, mosques and synagogues almost standing side by side. You will see Jews, Muslims and Christians living alongside each other in peaceful coexistence. Surrounding Israel, the rest of the region includes dictatorship, the oppression of women and minorities, and in some failed states, we have all too regularly seen images of young gay people being thrown off the top of buildings and women stoned on the streets. This stands in stark contrast to Israel's diversity and freedom. It truly is a beacon of democracy in a troubled region. I further discovered that there are tremendous synergies between my own area, Aberdeen, and Tel Aviv. Tel Aviv has a buzzing entrepreneurial culture, and its creative energy and early-age innovation is simply unparalleled. Similarly, in Aberdeen, we have a strong entrepreneurial spirit, and there is huge potential for greater partnership working between these two cities. Mr Speaker, I am deeply concerned by the boycott, disinvest, sanctions protests in my constituency, which have been actively trying to drive an Israeli cosmetics counter out of business holding this business unfairly accountable for government policy by assuming that the Israeli government represents the views of every Israeli citizen. In Aberdeen, poisonous and divisive banners stating anti-Semitism is a crime, anti-Zionism is a duty have been displayed whilst handing out unfounded propaganda. This is wholly unacceptable and simply acts to polarise the debate, undermine community relations, undermine peace efforts and increase tensions. Mr Speaker, today I actually join the calls of colleagues for the Home Secretary to urgently consider a full ban on Hezbollah, an organisation which does not believe in peace, only the extermination of Israel. We need to look at the actions of Hezbollah and the government should judge them on it. Hezbollah cannot be forgiven for its criminal, terrorist or militant pursuits simply because it engages in political or humanitarian ones. I urge the government to join with our closest allies in the US, Canada and the Netherlands in prescribing Hezbollah. The biggest obstacles to the advancement of peace include Hamas's rearmament drive in Gaza, internal infighting between Hamas and Fatah, as well as growing support for a one-state solution in Palestine, which could effectively remove the existence of Israel. Further unilateral actions by the Palestinian Authority to gain statehood recognition in the UN before any peace process has been agreed it also fails to support that. With all the instability across the region and the distrust that exists between the two sides, a two-state solution still seems too far off. However, in this centenary year, let's seize the opportunity to bring a lasting peace for both sides.